It, it's not right, is it? And it, neither is it normal that a Home Secretary who was effectively fired for breaching the ministerial code in, in fairly egregious terms and then lying about it, uh, that's according to reports that have thus far gone undenied, gets, gets reappointed six days later and then more stories begin to emerge suggesting that she's uh, receiving security lessons from MI5 over what information she can and cannot share and how to avoid security breaches. I, I mean, am I going soft in my old age or is that the sort of thing that you should really have clear before you get appointed to one of the highest offices in the land for the second time and then the, and, and i should mention that these stories are in the times and the daily mail and there's there's another one knocking around as well that i will dig out for you shortly um these are not what you would describe as traditionally negative newspapers towards conservative politicians particularly the daily mail of course which in the last month has pirouetted effortlessly from describing liz truss as a sort of second coming and her so-called mini budget as uh, one of the finest things ever to happen to british politics in a generation to recognizing the absolute ridiculousness of her premiership and essentially hastening her departure from Downing Street, but but they they have this headline: Suella was embroiled in probe over leak that raised concerns at MI5. So there are two stories in the right wing newspapers today that essentially. Well, no, it's not essentially. There are two stories about the Home Secretary in conservative supporting newspapers today that both have MI5 in the headline. You'll remember it's not long ago that she was telling you some poor soul in a dinghy in Dover might be a security risk to this country. But here you have an actual Home Secretary featuring in at least two stories wherein MI5 is expressing concerns. Leaky Sue is apparently her nickname. It's trending. It's overtaking Cruella. And Jake Berry, the former chairman of the Conservative Party, admittedly he's just been fired, so he's probably a little bit... Bitter, a little bit cross, but he said last night on the telly, well, it's sort of the telly, it's one of those weird news stations, but he nevertheless said it on tape, from my own knowledge, there were multiple breaches of the ministerial code. Multiple breaches. And he also explained that Simon Case, the Cabinet Secretary, had made his view clear that she did not own up to it despite being presented with the evidence. In other words, she, she sought to finagle and fib her way out of it, off the hook. You'll remember that letter she sent to Liz Truss essentially describing herself as, as having made a perfectly innocuous mistake. Um, and on it goes. This is not normal. Andy Sylvester, who is, I, I think, uh, at City AM, which is the editor at City AM, who is, that, I mean, that I don't know quite how you describe that politically. It went through a very, very strange period when it was pro-Brexit, despite being the newspaper of choice for uh, City uh, slickers, almost all of whom recognise the idiocy, idiocy of Brexit, of course, except the ones that were poised to make an absolute mint from it. But these days it's a much better proposition. And he is reporting that um, the Chief Inspector of Borders and Immigration, David Neal, says he hasn't met her yet. And only one of the 21 reports he submitted have been dealt with in the agreed time frame. That's, that's 21 reports within his tenure. That starts in March of 2021. So she wasn't in the Home Office for that entire period, but this covers her, her entire tenure as Home Secretary, both, both the last one and the box fresh new one. So she's not even doing the job that she's supposed to be doing. Um, that's three stories for you now, two of which question her security status, her, her ability to reflect or respect the requirements of the role with regard to leaking, and one of which essentially drives a coach and horses through any claim that she is getting on with other things more important than keeping an eye on what she should and shouldn't be leaking. So here's the thing, OK? Eight minutes after 10 is the time. What, what, what I really... I, I can't ask whether you care or not, but I will just for a moment issue another nod towards footballification, my, my fairly effective way of explaining 
why it is that that loyalty, political loyalty or tribalism can often give or persuade people to give a free pass to egregious behaviour. This is essentially the thing that Donald Trump said Hillary Clinton should be locked up for, despite the fact, if memory serves, that there, there was no sort of security service concerns about whatever it was she was up to. And yet it's our Home Secretary. And... Rishi Sunak must have known about some of this. We touched yesterday on the Sunday Times report that detailed fairly uh, thoroughly the case that she'd fibbed, the case that she had behaved abominably, egregiously, and then lied about it. That's according to the Sunday Times reports, which, you know, that means I add a reportedly or an allegedly. But yesterday, when Keir Starmer asked Rishi Sunak whether or not officials had expressed concerns, do you remember that point? Have officials expressed concerns about the Home Secretary's conduct? And Rishi Soon, I mean, he didn't answer any questions at PMQs yesterday. You'd have to turn to the Daily Mail this morning to find a positive account of of that bizarre exchange where Keir Starmer asked quite important questions that we would all like to hear the answers to. And Rishi Sunak banged on about Jeremy Corbyn and North London. Uh, He categorically didn't deny or indeed answer at all the question about whether or not the security services have expressed concerns about the current Home Secretary. What? So the reason I mentioned six or seven minutes ago that I I don't know if there's a phone in here, but I think we should at least try is because there's no obvious question to ask. You know, if I ask you whether you care, that's just a bit woolly, isn't it? How big a deal is this, is what I asked Theo Usherwood this morning. I, I, and, and we're both of the view that it is a big deal. Questions being asked at the lobby today about whether or not there would have been a, a sort of ethics inquiry into Suella Braverman that came back with a negative result that Rishi Sunak then elected to ignore, just as Boris Johnson ignored um, concerns expressed about some of the people he wanted to put into the House of Lords and indeed the report from his own independent eth- ethics advisor that th- found Suella Braverman's predecessor in the Home Office... Um, uh, Pretty Patel had been a bully, um, a, a conduct that cost an awful lot of taxpayers' money in compensation. So, <laughs> eleven minutes after ten is the time. I, I'm not. I'm not being lazy. I'm not being unprofessional when I struggle to come up with a question. Sometimes when I describe to you why I think a story is really important, a question presents itself that you can then respond to, and we can move into more traditional phone-in territory. So. <sighs> So let's just do it then. Suella was embroiled in probe over leak that raised concerns at MI5. MI5 security lessons for Leaky Sue. Independent Chief Inspector of Borders and Immigration says he's he's yet to meet her and only one of 21 reports he's submitted have been dealt with in the agreed time frame. Caroline Noakes, former Conservative Minister, I think definitely a Conservative MP, has told the BBC that there were big questions hanging over the issue and called for a full inquiry. That's a Conservative MP, I stress. Former Tory party chairman Jake Berry said her breaches had been multiple and serious. And then Nadeem Zahawi pops up this morning. We need a new nickname for him, don't we? Flip Flop Zahawi or something like that, who who apparently was on the phone to the Daily Telegraph begging them to take down the article he'd written about why Boris 2.0 was going to be a brilliant prime minister. And there's a sort of about 96 seconds elapsed between that piece appearing on the Telegraph website and Boris Johnson uh, chucking all of his supporters under the bus by pulling out of the leadership battle. So Zahawi's doing the... I mean, how can you take Nadeem Zahawi seriously? This is a man who goes, I support Boris Johnson. I support... Bo- oh, I, I support Suella Braverman. I support... I, 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 Rishi Sunak. I, I, I mean, just ridiculous. These people are like weather vanes. But he's got himself a job as party chairman and he said that she has... Uh, the Prime Minister has looked at this case and decided to give her a second chance. He then starts talking about redemption which is just weird. In the context of national security, I'm not sure there should be any context of redemption. What are we going to do next? Give a pardon to Burgess, Philby and McLean? Um, So, those are your three stories. Those are your four stories. 